Welcome to Max Lab Control. This app allows you to control your audio video equipment uh, on your network and allows you to make easy connections between your sources and receivers with just a few taps of the finger. Before you begin, make sure that your MuxLab network controller is plugged in and up to date and configured. Also make sure that your tr MuxLab transmitters and receivers are well plugged in and configured. The app will allow you to not only make connections but also configure presets, remote controls, allow you to send IR and RS-232 commands as well as many other convenient features. Always make sure to keep your MuxLab network controller up to date to keep enjoying the new features. In order to log in, make sure that you have the username and password that's used in the MuxLab controller web interface. It's the same account and they're always synchronized. So we're going to go ahead and log in. Um, over here we see our devices that are detected or discovered by the MuxLab network controller and displayed here on this page. So we have our displays up here, you can see there are nine of them, and we have our sources on the bottom, you can see there are four of them. On this page, you'll be able to click any of your devices in order to make a quick connection. Also, on top, you have your presets, which allows you to configure connections and commands IR or RS-232, which you might want to call up at any time. The refresh button over here will let the app get the most recent information about your devices from the MaxLab network controller. So over here, I'm going to click on the 100 inch TV and we're going to make a quick connection to one of our sources. And we could just quickly select another source and that's it, the connection's made. Let's do the same thing with the source. You can click on any source and choose the TV on which you want to play the source. These are the TVs here that are showing this source. Set up a location in order to better organize our devices. When you click on the locations tab on the bottom, you see this prompt to create a location. Let's go ahead and create our first one. Let's call it living room. And click create. Now that we have our living room, let's go ahead and assign some devices to this room. Click on assign devices and let's choose our 72 inch TV and our LG TV. So now these two devices are in our living room. So you could go ahead and click on one of them and make connections in the same way that we saw just before. Or you can go ahead and make a visual mode. Visual mode is a feature that allows you to upload a picture and place your devices on that picture to more easily make connections. Let's go ahead and click on visual mode. And I'm being asked over here to either select an image or use a blank background. So let's go ahead and select an image. We've uploaded a picture to our visual mode. We're taken to the visual mode editor. Over here, you can place any of the devices that you've added in, uh, into the room onto this backdrop. If you need to add more devices to this room, you can do so by clicking this button here and selecting the TV in question. Now, you can place the TV, resize it, and go ahead and save. Now that our visual mode is set up, we can go ahead and click on any TV we might have placed onto the backdrop, click it, and apply a source right then and there. The next thing you might want to do is set up your favorites. This is a convenient area where you can call up any devices or video walls that you have defined previously. To set up your favorites, go inside any device and mark it as favorite. Or go to a location and mark it as favorite. You now have your favorites set up over here and you can easily navigate to any of them just by clicking on them. In the settings page, you can change the IP address of the 811 you're connecting to over here. Or you can set up remote access to connect to your 811, your MNC, MuxLab Network Controller, from a remote location outside of the network. To do so, go ahead and click on Remote Access. To set up remote access, go ahead and click on Enable. What this will do is allow you to set up the site name so you can call this you know, home or office or whatever it may be. And you can enter that name over here. So let's call it home. Next, we're asked for an ng-rock auth token. So in order to use the remote access feature, make sure to head over to ngrock.com. You can create an account over there and get your auth token. The free account can be used, but the address of your 811 or your site name will change every time your 811 reboots. If this is not acceptable, you could get the paid account, which allows you to have a fixed domain name, which will represent your MuxLab network controller. 
So head over to ngrock.com and create your account. You will be prompted to install something that is not necessary. Just click on the off tab and enter your off token over here. Next, you can enter a subdomain. This will only apply for paid accounts, as we mentioned before, and it allows you to type in any subdomain that you would like to use along with ngrock. So as you can see, if I type in my home, then my address will be myhome.ngrock.io. You'll need to make sure to type in something unique enough to not collide with something that was previously defined. Go ahead and click save and your remote access will be enabled. To connect remotely to your installation, use the app and click on select MNC at the login screen. Over here, go ahead and click on it. And here is home that we just defined. If you go ahead and click it, you'll see that the IP address or URL field is populated with our ngrock address. Go ahead and click save and you'll be able to log into the app as usual. You can use your Muxnap control app to manage your video walls as well. What I've done over here is I've configured my video walls and my MNC, my 500811. You can find out how using the manual on our website. Let's go ahead and click on signage video wall. Over here, I'm able to select my screen and apply a source, just like regular devices. I can also use layouts to switch between video wall layouts, which I'll apply right away and see the sources apply to it. I can select specific areas of my video wall and change the source as well. To create layouts, refer to the MNC manual. For 500, 762, and 763 models, this will be fully managed in the MNC. For non-multi-view models, such as the 754, 755 family, you create your video walls in the MNC, but you manage your layouts in the app. Let's see how. Go ahead and click on devices, and this is my video wall of 754s. My layouts over here come with two defaults, individual TVs or full video wall. To create a new one, a custom one, I would go ahead and click on create new layout. This will show me the different sections of video wall that I defined in my MNC. Again, refer to the manual on how to do that. Let's go ahead and make a video wall with the top row over here selected and the bottom row as well. Now let's select the source for each of these areas. Let's go ahead and call this layout Hockey Night. And now I can use my Hockey Night just by clicking and applying it. There it is. Let's see how video walls look in visual modes. Let's go ahead and click on our sales floor, which I've created. Over here I have my signage video wall, which is my multi-view video wall, 762763. If I just click on it, I can select the source and apply it to the entire video wall. Now, if I want to apply a specific layout, I can press and hold, and this will take me to the video wall page that we've seen before. And the same applies for the non-multi-view models. So let's go ahead and click on my airport. Here is my video wall. I can go ahead and click and choose a source for the entire video wall, or I can click and hold, and that will take me to the video wall page we've seen before. A nice little feature that you have when working with multiple locations is that you can easily swipe between rooms. You would swipe from the right or the left of the screen in order to trigger the switching to the next room. Release and switch to the next room and, and go back. Let's take a look at the remote control feature in Mudslab Control. This allows you to design a remote control that can send RS-232 and IR commands straight from the app. So let's go and select the locations by clicking on locations and living room. Over here we have the control button. Let's go ahead and click it. This will allow us to start defining our buttons. Let's go and create our first button. Let's name it power. So power off the TV. And we'll select the power icon. Over here we can select the color. We'll keep the default for now. We can select size and a shape. These shapes are the regular shapes. These four over here, which are missing a border, will help you to create a directional pad. If you combine these four, you can make an up, down, left, right pad, which will look nice together. Let's go ahead and define our commands. This is the hex command over here. You can either type it in, copy paste it from a website, or you can learn the command. So if I were to learn an IR command, I can go ahead and click on the learn button down here. And this will ask me to select an IR sensor that will sense the command that I will press from my physical remote control. So you would go ahead and click on one of your sensors and that will wait for your IR command. You would then point your remote control to that sensor, hit it, and that would pre-fill 
this field over here with the command that was read. Next, you're going to want to select the devices to which you want to send this command that you just learned to be emitted. So these are all the emitters that you want to emit the specific command that you just entered. So you could go ahead and click couple and check. You'll notice over here IR auto configuration on some of the devices. This means that device's IR port is directional and the app will automatically set this device's IR mode to emitter before sending the command. It will set it back to its previous mode when it's done. Let's go ahead and press save. And, and now we can add more actions to this very same button. If, for example, we wanted to send the power off commands to multiple TVs that have different IR commands, for example, different TV models, we could go ahead and define it over here. So we will learn the new command over here, select other devices that would receive the command to be emitted. These are my IR emitters. And go ahead and click save. You can also actually define an RS-232 command in the very same button. Just go ahead and click RS-232 over here, enter the command, and same thing again, select your RS-232 compatible devices here to receive these commands. Let's go ahead and click save. I now have my power button over here that I can move around in order to design an aesthetically pleasing remote control. Let's go ahead and click save. Now that my remote control is saved, I can just click the power button and those IR and RS-232 commands will be sent to the appropriate devices. Here's an example of remote control I created using the different shapes, sizes, and colors available in the edit button. As you can see, I have my directional pad. I can place buttons within it. The next feature we're going to look at are presets. Presets allow you to set specific connections and RS-232 or IR commands to be all activated with the press of one button. Let's go ahead and click presets in the general devices tab or in a specific location if you want presets to apply to a specific location. Let's create a general one for now. Click add a new preset and give it a name. Let's call this one breakfast time in the case of a restaurant. Let's create some connections and some commands that we want to run during breakfast time. So connection, let's go ahead and click add. So you could add many connections over here and the idea is to select the source and a display for that connection. So let's go ahead and click a source or a video all layout. So over here I have my sources as well as my video all layout that we defined previously. So let's go ahead and choose our media player. And these are the TVs that we will send the video to. We could send it to the Slange TV as well as our video wall. Let's select the Lounge TV for now. And here's the source and the display that's going to be activated. You can also define multiple connections to run at breakfast time. Let's stick with one for now. As for control, this is the very same interface as we saw in the remote control feature. Let's go ahead and create one simple command. And let's call it power on. And let's learn the command over here by clicking learn. You can refer to the um, section on remote control for more details. You we'll go ahead and click learn and learn the command using one of your sensors. I would fill up this field over here for the hex command. And let's choose the devices that will be turned on that will receive this command to be emitted through the IR emitter port. We can go ahead and click on our signer TV. And that's it, let's save it. And so now we have our breakfast time preset. When you click play over here, that will run those connections and those commands all in one shot. As mentioned previously, you can create presets for specific locations. If you want some presets to appear just for that location and not to appear in other locations or in the general tab as we are now.